Hey everyone, so I was um, looking around on YouTube just for a simple uh, rigged, not rigged, umbrella. There are a lot of different videos out there um, on how to set up an umbrella and it varies from like being super detailed with, you know, my, for example, I don't even have a, a rib along this thing. Um, for my purposes, I'm throwing some tune shading on, I didn't really need to do that. I don't even have any of the spline skeleton things underneath it that like fold and you can there's tutorials showing how to set that up, but I just wanted to find a real simple one. Um, I'm going to make this available for download so you can get it too, because I just need something quick and dirty. And I downloaded a few and messed around. I'm like, well, these are all a little bit... Like some people are doing like cloth sims on these these uh, like uh, loft parts, and that's just a little bit too much. So I just wanted to do something simple. Uh, it's not even technically espresso. Um, and yeah, this is just kind of how I did it, um, really rudimentary you just kind of followed the logical progression of things so like you'd have a cylinder for your pole obviously um, I used just an arc spline if you go into side view which you can scale down um, and then one thing I forgot to do last time was so make it editable and then we're just gonna um, use our anchor point and scoot this up so that way the anchor point is in and out. And that's, we're going to rotate this, and that's what's going to have it open close, basically. So, again, quick and dirty. Um, one thing was that, I mean, you could have an umbrella at this angle. It's like a weird, I've seen those umbrellas. They're very, very weird looking, almost like a hood. Um, but we want this to bend out a little bit more. And you could do that if you mess with points or whatever. Um, but one just simple way, again, for the sake of saving time, just throw a bend on it. Um, and then, of course, you have to line up your bend. So let's figure that out real quick and just kind of move the bend around. I think it was, was it 180? Yes. So then if you go into side, also make sure your um, bend deformer boundary is like kind of lined up on this edge, maybe a little bit at the top here. And so then when you bend it, great. It's just kind of, yeah. And at this disc, that's kind of the correct arc that an umbrella has. It's not exactly like from 45 degree uh, radius or whatever. So you can just hide that. And then in here is where the magic happens. We just do some loft stuff. And on most of the umbrellas I was looking at, it is like eight sections. So it's like 45 degrees. So you could just duplicate this and then rotate. Well, I'm going to shift the course to snap to 45 degrees. Then you go get yourself a loft and throw them in there. Voila. And so then in the end, you can just simply duplicate this and again move. Sorry, I've got a text there. Move this at 45 degrees until you have all eight panels. Um, again, you could use cloners for this, most likely, but again, quick and dirty. And it doesn't really make a difference because even after you duplicate these things, uh, the thing that's going to drive it, for example, is if you just search arc so you can grab all your arcs nice and clean it's just z that's all that's going to do it and the way we have it set up the lofts will respect it because they're not like um you know they're not going to intersect because they're actually being uh, procedurally stretched so yeah um and i guess you could even if you wanted to you could go into bend and um you could add a secondary animation of this that might add some extra but you can't really do a whole lot before it gets weird so that's kind of what I'm at 31 um, but then I, I was looking at this and I'm like okay this is good and uh, let's delete this one so we can just talk about this one piece the secret sauce is you looked at some umbrellas like my main one here there's like a little arc in the middle and how do you get a loft to do that well it's just a matter of Putting another spline in there that's slightly shorter um, to give it that definition. So by that, all you'd have to do, and the order does matter in here actually, and I'll show you what I mean. So you just want, let's turn off our loft so you can see our splines here. Uh, duplicate this loft, and I think that it is about 25 degrees is the middle. Maybe it's not exactly 25. Oh, it's 20 maybe. I don't know, it's kind of in between. I'm not I don't remember what the math is, but it's like something kind of like that. Let's see, it's not roughly right. I should so this is the view I should be doing. 
Yeah, it's kind of like in between. It's like 22 almost or something. Well, either way, yeah, it's something like 22. I mean, you can figure it out. Once you duplicate it, it's fine. It's all uniform. But this, what you do then is you just simply scale this um, down, and you can see what it does if you enable. Oh, yeah, and that was the thing I was actually doing. Order does matter in these in the loft, because right now it's like going over here and then back in the middle. And so all you have to do is just drag it into the middle, and now it's listening uh, the correct order. And, and so, like I said, you can just simply do a, um, well, you could do the, the scale thing in here, or to be consistent, you can actually go in here and type in, in your scale parameters, like 0.90 or maybe like 0.95, 5, 5. So then you got something like that. And or maybe this point 0.9 is fine. I don't know, it kind of matters on what your preference is. And so let's duplicate these real quick so that you can see kind of how it all comes together here. And I'm going to duplicate it oops, come back four times. To do. Okay, and then since that's half of one, I'm just going to grab all four of these and then just uh, control duplicate them again. And then we're going to spin 180. So this is easy to get that set up. Great. Let's poke our cylinder up through the top here just a bit more. Um, and you can also put a top around that, kind of like I had in the final. So you can see, like, this now has a nice indention, which is really good. Um, and that's kind of a really simple way to go about it. Um, one other thing, though, was um, I still was lacking kind of like even on here, it's perfectly there's like a, there's more indention in detail. And so one way I was going about to get um, if you look at if you look at this, there's kind of a like a ridge thing happening at the top. And the way you get that again is just by messing with offset. Um, so once again, using the search thing saves you so much time. The one that's in our middle is universally called arc2, arc.2, since we just duplicated that a billion times. And what you can do is type in arc.2, so you only get your arcs here. And then to get that ridge indentation, I think I just slightly pushed them down a tad, oh so slightly. Um, and I guess you could scale it even more, or you could even go into, I think this is what I actually ended up doing on the final, is I just went in here into Z, and I kind of tapped them just a tiny bit more, and that'll again fect, affect your ridge, but it just kind of adds a more of a, a nice little ridge thing happening. Now, for the sake of, if you need things to be totally clean, uh, one thing that I also found out was happening is if you zoom in the top here, you get some kind of not enough subdivs happening is what it is and that's just a simply a loft thing so you can go to your loft object and make sure this is also 16 and you can go higher if you want to without killing your system just kind of depends on what you can handle but from far out great and if that's too much you just grab your arcs and bump them back up so again to then animate open close no no rigging no physics nothing like that it's just the lofts listening to the splines and in that case, we would grab all arcs, so just type arc, and we get all of our lovely arcs here. And if you wanted to, you could set up um, an espresso. In this case, actually, I have multiple values, so it's going to mess up what I just did, but it doesn't look too bad. And uh, yeah, this is what your closed state would look like, which, again, this is quick and dirty. Some people are looking for... Uh, the way it works in real life is these don't bend. They would actually go straight. Um, what happens if we grab our our bends and like you could do a sec again a secondary animation just by tweaking different things? Could you make these go straight? Well, that's interesting. So you could do that and then grab your arcs again <laughs> and fold them in even more. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> so you get something like that, and then when you, um, you know, do your keyframing correctly, it would just get back to a state like this, and then you'd roughly end up with this thing. So yeah, 
Um, hopefully that's useful to you. Um, again, I'll have it available for download so you don't have to mess with all that, but just a nice clean way of doing something really quick. All right, thank you for watching.